Hey guys, I'm Robbie from IELTS Coach Pro. We help people get seven and eights on their IELTS exam so they can live out their dreams without wasting time and money on methods that do not work. Uh, we put out lots of videos, so if you're preparing for your IELTS, click the subscribe button. And if you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up, a like, uh, leave us a comment, tell us what you think. Today's video, we are looking at, in my opinion, probably the most difficult part of the IELTS exam. And a lot of people agree with that. You might struggle with a different part more than this, but regardless, this is a very challenging piece of the IELTS exam, and it is the matching headings question type in the IELTS reading section. And so we have a pro method that we're going to walk you through. And then we're going to do some step by step practice with a real IELTS exam, some real matching headings questions. So watch the video, learn the pro method with us and follow along, do the practice. And this is really going to help you. I know a lot of people really struggle with this one. It really is difficult, but if you use our method and you practice, you can master this one. And so you don't have to freak out if you get it on exam day and you can get that seven or that eight that you need in reading. So let's look at the pro method. So let's look at the pro method for this. There are five steps in this pro method. Um, the first one is pretty simple. Uh, do this question type first. If you're looking at a reading passage and matching headings is one of the question types attached to the reading passage you're working on, do this question type first because doing these questions will give you a really deep understanding of the passage as a whole. And then when you go on to do those other question types, they're going to be easier and you're going to find the answers better and faster um, because this question type really forces you to really thoroughly understand the passage. So if you do it first, it's going to be really helpful. So that's step one. Uh, step two is cross out any paragraphs that are already answered. Sometimes they'll answer one of these for you and you don't want to waste your time doing it if it's already been answered for you. Uh, step three is read the first paragraph and understand the full main point. So you have to read the paragraph fully and understand the main point or the main message of that paragraph. Step number four is to then look at all the headings, read all of them, and choose the best one that matches the paragraph that you just read. And then the final step, step number five, is to uh, repeat this method for all the paragraphs. And then once you get to the end of the section, you will have read all the paragraphs. You will have chosen the right answer uh, that matches the right headings with the right paragraphs. So now let's look at the real IELTS reading passage with real questions. So here we have a real IELTS reading passage called The Burden of Thirst. So the title is here. There's a heading right here. And then we start with paragraph A, labeled with the capital letter A. Over on the right side, we have some instructions. Um, and then the list of headings, each with a lowercase Roman numeral, such as I, double I, triple I, etc. So we want to follow our pro method here. And step number one is to see if any of the paragraphs have already been matched with a heading. So maybe right here, there would be a heading next to letter A, or there would be a capital A next to one of these list of headings, or somewhere on the page, A is already matched with a heading. If you see that, um, you want to look for it, and then you want to cross out any paragraphs that that um, applies to, so you don't waste your time working on paragraphs that have already been answered. Um, and then step number two 
applies to everybody, and this is the most important step for the matching headings type question, and that is to read the entire paragraph. <laughs> what do you know? You actually have to read a full paragraph. Um, sometimes you don't have to in IELTS, but for matching headings type question, you need to read the full paragraph, and you need to make sure you understand the full paragraph and understand the main point or the main message of this paragraph specifically. So it's not going to be the main message of the entire passage. It's like the burden of thirst. Obviously, we're learning about people that have some sort of water struggle. That's too general when we're looking at the main point of a specific paragraph. So we're wanting to understand what the main point of this paragraph is as it is separate from the other paragraphs in this passage. We also need to know that the main point or main message is something that applies to the entire paragraph. So if you read this and then you think the main point is just something that was mentioned briefly as a minor detail, um, that's not what we're going for here. We're looking for what was the main message of this entire paragraph. And the reason that we read the paragraph first and figure out the main point before looking at the headings is because the headings are going to distract us. The people who make IELTS are tricky and they make some headings that are very similar to other headings or they might focus on a minor detail in your paragraph. And if you read the headings first, um, you're going to get distracted as you read the paragraph um, but you don't want to be distracted. You just want to read the paragraph and make sure you understand the main point or the main message so that if somebody asked you, what is this paragraph about? You could tell them, oh, it's about um, these people who travel for water uh, every day or whatever. Another reason that you don't want to start with the headings is because let's say you read all eight headings and then you're reading this paragraph A trying to think about eight things at once because if you if you did it that way you'd have to read all eight headings you'd have to be reading this passage and then in your mind the whole time be thinking is the main message of this paragraph uh, one two three four five six set it's too much to think about um, when you should be focusing on reading the passage and just understanding the main message of the passage. But after you've done that, then step three is you can look at your list of headings. Make sure you read them all. So start with I, move down to I, I, and read them all. As you read, try to decide um, if the heading that you're on <laughs> could possibly match the main message of the paragraph that you just read. So the way that they word it um, with what they have written to be the main message or the main heading for this paragraph, it's not going to be the exact same words as what maybe you thought of as the main message when you read the paragraph. And that's fine. Um, you're not trying to guess the right answer um, in step two. You're just trying to read the passage and get an idea of what the main message is so that when you look at the list of headings, you will be able to recognize which one matches as the main message of this paragraph. So you want to read all of the headings. Um, as you read, you might read one, two, three, four, then you get to five or V and you're like, oh, some relevant statistics. That might be true for this one. So you can just put a little mark by it or something to let yourself know that that might be true. But then keep reading all of them uh, because you might find a better one. And so after you read six, seven, and eight, if six, seven, and eight just definitely don't match and you thought five or V maybe matches, uh, then you'll choose V as the answer for A but you do want to make sure you read all of the headings here um, so that you don't miss the correct answer just because you didn't take the time to read all of the headings. So um, that's how you do these. Um, they are not easy. So 
if you find this question type difficult and you want more practice with it, um, a really good idea is to go to IELTSCoachPro.com. Um, we practice this question type quite a bit in our course because we know that a lot of people really struggle with it. Um, you can also find practice tests for free online to do more practice, um, but if you take a course, you can have someone guide you through all the answers and explain all of them. I'm going to explain six answers to you right now, but if you would like more coaching, as always, you can go to IELTSCoachPro.com. So I know you've had a chance to look at the headings by now and look at the paragraph, but I really want you to pretend <laughs> that you didn't get that chance. So I've taken away the headings and I want you to pretend that this is your real IELTS exam and I want you to read this paragraph. And with IELTS reading questions, you need to be able to do them on average in 90 seconds per question or one and a half minutes per question. Now, matching headings is more difficult more cons time consuming type of question. So you can take up to two minutes on these questions if you can increase your speed on the other question types. So this is where you'll need to take a full IELTS reading mock test so that you know your speed in all the different passages and all of the different question types. Um, so you know how much time to allow yourself for these matching headings. But you do not want to spend more than two minutes on any question. If it's really giving you problems, um, after two minutes, just guess, move on to the next one, and you can come back to it at the end if you have extra time. But this one, it can really be a time sucker. Um, you can get really lost in it and spend way too much time trying to match these headings. So do not spend more than two minutes. Um, and as you practice, um, you need to get your speed um, to the place where you can do one of these questions in two minutes and even try to get it done in 90 seconds if possible. That would be really helpful. But um, if you have two minutes overall for this question, um, I'm going to give you one and a half minutes to read this paragraph. So um, first we're going to read the paragraph, then we're going to look at the headings so that we follow our method. So your time starts now. All right, hopefully you had a chance to read that as you're practicing. If you need more time, you can always pause the video. And if your speed is a little bit faster for any of these, you can fast forward through the waiting times. Um, but here is the list of headings. So now that you know the main message of that first paragraph, I'm going to give you 45 seconds to read all of these headings and then choose the one that you think matches the main message of this paragraph the best.
All right, your 45 seconds is up. Did you find the right answer? The correct answer for this one is VI, or six. Um, a regular trip for some people is the main message or the main heading here. Um, if you got it right, that's awesome. Um, if you didn't, I will explain it for you now. So some teachers or coaches will recommend that in order to increase your speed, you just read the first one or two sentences and the last one or two sentences of every paragraph, and that will give you the main message. Um, that only works on 50% or less of the questions. So if you follow that strategy, um, you're going to get about half of these questions wrong, and you need to score better than that to get a 7 or an 8. So um, you can give some extra weight to the first two sentences and maybe the last one or two sentences of the paragraph, but you need to read the whole thing, understand the whole thing, and with this one, the main message is actually most clearly referenced in the middle of the paragraph. So this paragraph is all about a regular trip for some people. If you look at the top, um, Alito Benayo's feet know the mountain. You don't know the correct answer just from reading that sentence, but it fits into number six. Like, why do Alito Benayo's feet know the mountain? Well, it's because this is a regular trip for Alito. Okay? Um, but then we read, we read, we get to the middle, and then where it says she has made this journey three times a day since she was a small child. So that's how we know this is a regular trip. If she's going three times a day, that's a regular trip. And this entire paragraph is about this trip. Um, but it's not just for Ailito. This is a regular trip for some people because every other woman in her village has done this. So this entire paragraph is clearly about a regular trip for some people. So we want to choose number six for this one. Um, let's move on to the next one. All right. For B, I'm not going to remove the headings from your view. I'll let you look at everything at once, but still follow the method. Um, read the paragraph first, understand it, and then choose a heading that matches it. So I'll give you two minutes to do this. Read the paragraph, then read all the headings, find the one that matches, and your two minutes starts now.
All right, the two minutes is up. Do you think you found it? The correct answer for this one is V or five. Some relevant statistics, okay? The reason for that is in three separate places throughout this paragraph, you have a relevant statistic. So it's not just one detail in one sentence. You could say this whole paragraph is about statistics. So nearly nine million people do something. That's a statistic. Furthermore, 2.5 billion people, blah, blah, blah. That's a statistic. 3.3 million people. That's a statistic. And even a lack of rain over the past few years. It's not really a statistic. It's not a specific number. But this whole paragraph is about giving you some statistics that will help you understand this problem better. This paragraph had a couple tricky things. So one thing that might have tricked you is it talks about developed parts of the world. So you might have been tempted to put a rural and urban problem uh, because Alito might be rural, developed might be urban. You might have been tempted to do that. Um, but developed doesn't necessarily mean urban. They could be closely related words. But the main reason that II does not work here is this sentence is saying in developed parts of the world, people turn on a tap and outpours abundant clean water. So they don't have a problem in the developed world. Um, it's only the developing world that has this problem. So II cannot be correct. It's not a rural and urban problem. Another thing that might have tripped you up is number VII says treating people for disease. And right here we've got this big keyword disease. This is a great example of why you cannot just match keywords in this question type. You have to find the full meaning of the whole paragraph because Yes, um, this paragraph has a sentence that is all about disease. Um, but for one, it's not about treating people for those diseases. And for two, this is only one sentence in this paragraph. The rest of the paragraph is not about diseases. And so this can't be the main message or the main heading of the entire paragraph because it's just a one sentence detail. That's very important for this question type. You're not matching a detail in the heading with a detail in the paragraph. You're matching the meaning of the heading with the main message of the paragraph as a whole. All right, let's move on to the next one. Again, you can have two minutes here. Um, read the paragraph first, then read the headings and choose the correct one.
All right, your two minutes is up. What do you think? The correct answer is V triple I, or eight. The main message of this paragraph is how water can change people's lives. Why is that? Okay. Um, in the first sentence, it just tells us that we're going to bring water into their lives, uh, but that is giving us an introduction to the main message of this paragraph, which is actually a bunch of examples and points of how people's lives are changed or benefited when they receive water. So this is another one. If you just read the first sentence here, you might think that the correct answer is triple I, a possible success, because it's like bringing clean water to their homes. It's a key to the problem. That could be a success. Um, but you need to read the whole paragraph um, in order to get the right answer. So the second sentence, it says, communities where clean water becomes accessible and plentiful are transformed. So transformed means changed. Uh, but how are they changed? Well, their lives are changed because all the hours previously spent hauling water can be used to cultivate more crops. Families spend less time sick. Um, girls can go to school. So this whole paragraph is about how water can change people's lives. So the correct answer here is V triple I. Here's the next one. Take two minutes. Read the paragraph. Then read the headings and choose the correct heading. All right, your time's up there. Did you get it? The correct answer is I, or one here. So this paragraph is about why some plans have failed. This one was a little bit easier, and honestly, by only reading the first sentence, you could have gotten the correct answer to this one, because uh, you see challenges can be overwhelming. That's probably why some plans have failed, but you can't assume that. You never know, after reading the first sentence, if that's going to actually give you the correct answer. So you need to read the rest of the paragraph to confirm it. Um, and in this case, it is confirmed. The reason some plans have failed, um, some things require geological expertise and expensive heavy machines. A lot of wells and water projects are abandoned. Um, biggest problem with water schemes, half of them break down, 
Um, sometimes technology is used that can't be repaired locally. So these are all the problems, all the failures. Um, so the answer here is definitely I. Here's the next one. Take two minutes, read the paragraph, read the headings, and choose the right answer. All right, did you get it? This one may have been a little more difficult. The main message of paragraph E is IV here, explaining a new management style. So the first two paragraphs here just kind of say that this organization called Water Aid is coming in, they're using better technology. Uh, but then here, in sentence number three, it transitions and they introduce the really main point or their main message of this paragraph. And they say, but the real innovation, it's a great indicator that what's about to come is the main point because this is the real innovation or the real solution. And the real innovation is that Water Aid believes technology is only part of the solution, just as important is involving the local community in designing, building, and maintaining new water projects. And then the last couple sentences just describe how they design, build, and maintain new water projects with the community involved. And so all of this is describing a new management style where they involve the community in designing and building and maintaining. So that one was a little bit tricky. Again, you might have been tempted to put a possible success here because this program seems to be successful. But what it's really explaining here is this new management style is the real innovation here. All right, so let's look at F. And this is the last one. So um, you'll notice that there are six paragraphs here. And there are eight heading options. That means that two of them will not be used. Uh, that makes things more tricky. Uh, one important thing to note is each heading can only be used either one time or zero times. So once we use one, we can cross these off and eliminate them. But we don't want to cross them out completely because if we get to letter F, and we realize that the heading that is definitely correct for letter F has already been chosen somewhere else, we might have to um, erase it from that one that we previously put it with and 
put it now with F and then go find a new answer for B or C. That won't happen here because I've been giving you all of the correct answers, but it could happen to you on exam day where um, you're doing A and B and you choose an answer and then when you get down to E or F, you feel like the one that you actually chose for A would be better for F and then you're going to have to wrestle a little bit and you might need to erase what you put for A, put that on F, and then choose a new one for A. So be prepared for that because um, it could happen to you on test day. Um, but I've been giving you all the correct answers so far. So by process of elimination, um, it's not going to be why some plans have failed. It's not going to be explaining a new management style. It's not going to be some relevant statistics. It's not going to be a regular trip for some people. And it's not going to be how water can change people's lives because we've already chosen these options for other paragraphs. So we've narrowed it down a little bit. Um, you can go ahead, read paragraph F first, then look at the remaining headings and choose the one that is correct. All right, this one was difficult also, but by process of elimination, hopefully you were able to find the correct one. So um, the main things that can help you get this one is again, process of elimination. Um, if you've been getting the correct answers up to this point, you would only have three options left. Um, you might wanna glance at the others on test day, just in case you made a mistake. Um, but here, as you read this paragraph, it just, it can't be about a rural and urban problem because there's nothing about the urban world or cities here. Um, it can't be treating people for disease um, because I don't believe there's anything about diseases here. And even if there is a detail I missed, it would be just a detail. The main message here is definitely not about diseases. So the only one left is III, a possible success, but the reason that that is correct and why that heading really matches here um, is because the tone of this is very hopeful. So as you read more and more English, you might be able to recognize different tones. And so the tone of this heading is a possible success. It's very hopeful. Um, the tone of this paragraph is also very hopeful, but they really make it super clear. Um, as you're reading, reading, like they made this plan, it looks pretty good, 
but that last sentence is what really makes it clear. It says, if all goes well, Ailito Benayo will have a tap with safe water. If all goes well. So it's a possible success. It's not guaranteed yet because uh, of this word if. We don't know that all is going to go well, um, but it is possible. There's maybe a good chance. So uh, number three is definitely a possible success. Um, before I explain this here, I just want to say um, definitely subscribe if you're preparing for IELTS uh, so that you don't miss a video. Um, if you want to see more videos like this, you can click subscribe. You can watch our other videos. Um, give us a like if you liked it. Um, give us a comment, and if you need more help with your IELTS, check out IELTSCoachPro.com. Uh, we help people get sevens and eights on the IELTS exam. We have an incredible course with live classes, video trainings, practice activities, uh, plus I grade your writing assignments and give you feedback, and I also give you feedback and coaching on your speaking and answer any of your questions things like that. So check out IELTSCoachPro.com. Um, now I want to explain this. This is very important if you are taking the paper-based test. Um, if you're taking computer-based, it's pretty easy to click the right headings for the right paragraphs. But in paper-based, it gets a little confusing because um, when they ask the questions, they will just, I'm writing in red up here, they will just say, oh, like question one is uh, paragraph A, okay? Question two is paragraph B. So if you've taken a practice test before, you know this is what it looks like. Um, question three will just be paragraph C. And then they'll have four, five, and six as well, um, but then, on your answer sheet, it just says one, two, three, four, five, six. And so you need to match up. <laughs> uh, for number one, um, you need to choose the heading that matches paragraph A. But do not write the full heading. If you write the full heading, you will get this marked wrong. You need to write this VI these small Roman numerals. So the correct answers for what we just did is one is VI, two is V, three is V triple I, and so on. Um, but on exam day, or even if you're taking a practice test, the way that this is all laid out can just get a little confusing. So it's important to always remember to only put the Roman numerals in your answer sheet. and one reason it can be more confusing is lots of times this matching headings section will come in the middle of your exam. So it won't be one, two, three, four. It'll be like 14, 15, 16. Um, so you need to make sure whatever number matches paragraph A, like maybe they said number 14, and then on your answer box for 14, you would write the Roman numeral for the heading that matches paragraph A. So definitely practice this a couple times before your exam. Another thing that can be very helpful, I'll go back here, is um, as you're doing all these, next to each letter, write the Roman numerals. That'll just help you stay organized. Um, so you could write I, I, I by F, and you could you know, write the correct answer here, write the correct answer here. Um, that'll just help you stay organized. You do need to make sure that you also transfer the correct answers to your answer sheet because they only look at this answer sheet if you're on paper-based. Um, and again, if you're on computer-based, you probably don't have to worry about that so much. So if you have any questions about this matching headings question type, uh, put a comment on this video. I know this can be confusing. Again, if you need more help, go to IELTSCoachPro.com. I hope that this method was really helpful for you. 
and definitely follow this method on exam day. This is the best method for this matching headings question type. It will help you get the right answers and it will help you find them much faster. All the best as you prepare for IELTS. I hope you get the score that you need and that you're able to live out your dream. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye.